As with most class-based object-oriented languages, the C++ language supports inheritance. And as with most class-based object-oriented languages, inheritance provides two main things for you. It allows you to create subtypes and therefore gives you a form of polymorphism. And it also kind of gives you the ability to inherit methods and data from the base classes. And something to note about C++ is that the common terminology in C++ is not superclass subclass. Uh, you can use that and people will probably understand. But when you're reading C++, you'll, you'll more generally see base class and derived class. And so the supertype is the base class and anything that inherits from it is a derived class. So to illustrate this, I'm going to use kind of the quintessential example of a shape. So I have a class here called shape. Uh, something else to note about in C++, you don't have something like a Java interface or a Scala trait. You just have your classes. You also have structs, uh, but they're effectively classes with a different visibility. So everything that we do is going to be uh, built off of classes. So I create a class for shape. It's supposed to be a general shape. And all shapes have an area, so it has a method in it that will return the area. Then I declare a class called circle. And of course, a circle is a type of shape. And so I want it to inherit from shape. And the first thing we should look at here is how it's different syntactically than what you would have had in Scala or possibly Java. You do not have the extends keyword. That's not used. Instead, you place a colon after the class name. And then you have to put a visibility specifier, in this case, public. And for most of the inheritance you're going to do, it will be public. It is possible to do private inheritance. With private inheritance, though, you're not a subtype. So what you're doing is kind of fundamentally different. You're, you're kind of mimicking composition when you do private inheritance. And then the name of the class that we want to inherit from. And so just this is, you have to pay attention to that syntax. It's also possible in C++ to have multiple inheritance. That's a more advanced topic. We're not really going to go into that, but you can inherit from as many different classes as you want here. Um, just be careful when doing so, and there are ways in which that can cause you problems that you, you need to be aware of, so you probably want to read up on multiple inheritance before you try doing it much. Of course, circles have a radius associated with them, and in order to set that radius, I have a constructor here. I went ahead and put the constructor in the header file because I'm just using the initializer list for setting values, and then we say that we have an area method in our circle. I also created a rectangle. Rectangles have width and height. We have a constructor to set it, and then that area method again. Okay, it's all fairly straightforward. We can implement the various area methods, and at this point, you probably should go, wait, wait, this is kind of a stupid method here. It is, we'll deal with that later. Uh, in fact, we'll see their, their problem. We're going to do some things that wind up causing us problems. We've already done things that cause us problems. Um, and we'll need to come back and fix them. But for the time being, shape has an area method in it, so I need to implement it someplace. So I implement it here, and it returns zero. The circle type calculates its area, and the rectangle type calculates its area. So now I want to have a main that utilizes this. So I create a main, and inside of this main, I declare one shape, one circle, run one rectangle. And then I have a function called print area that takes a shape. Things to note, I am passing this shape in at, by value. That's actually one of my first mistakes. And I just, inside of that method, I just print out the area. And so I call this three different times, once with the shape, once with the circle, once with the rectangle. Okay. Um, I go over here and compile that. Okay. 
And since I have two CPP files here, I'll put them both on the, that line. And then I'm going to run this program. Now, in reality, what you expected here was 25 pi to be printed by the C. So the S was going to print zero because, well, that's the implementation for a shape. But then you were expecting 25 pi because a circle should do this, and then 12 for the rectangle, but we got zero, zero, zero. It looks as if all of these called the version that is in shape, and the version in circle and rectangle weren't used at all. Effectively, there are two reasons why that's happening. Um, and we have to fix both of them if we want to make this work. Because it turns out the code as it's written out is using the version of area that's in shape for all of those calls. So we'll come back in the next video and we will look at what it is that we're messing up in this code and how we can fix it.